It's election day and polls are beginning to close all over the country. If you are currently in line to vote, you must be let in to vote. In the crucial swing state of Ohio, the PPNC is characterizing this too close to call. Also, in the state of Pennsylvania, the PPNC is characterizing this too close to call. Good morning voters of Bath High School and welcome to the PPNC's coverage of the 2016 presidential election. Reporters Bo Gross and Logan Magrum have been tracking these two close races throughout the evening. Now, out to Bo in Ohio with voter Natalie Crow. Hello, I'm Bo Gross here with a concerned Ohio voter, Natalie Crow. Natalie, tell me, who are you going to vote for? Um, Donald Trump. And why? He's the one I least hate. I see where you're coming from. Thank you. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton have both created controversy during this election season. A lot of voters have concerns for both candidates. Now we are going to go to Pennsylvania, where Logan Magrum is with state legislator Gabe Niebel. I'm here with Pennsylvania state legislator Gabe Niebel. Gabe, I understand that you're voting for Mr. Trump. Yes. What is the reasons that you are favoring Donald Trump in this election? Well, Logan, I would believe he would bring real change to America. He would secor secure our borders. He would fight against ISIS. He's a businessman, so he knows how to run the economy and work a budget. So those are some of the main points. So what would be some reasons that you do not like Hillary? What is, is there a certain thing about her that you just don't agree with at all? Well, besides all the corruption she brings with the email scandals and all of that nonsense, she would continue working on Obamacare, which, as we can tell, is uh, not working out and is crumbling. So that's a major problem. Thank you. Also, Austin Starr was able to get an interview with two Pennsylvania voters. I'm here with Tristan Cheeseman and Reese Bradlin. Tristan, I'm, I know you're a Hillary supporter. What is one thing you like about Hillary? I like that Hillary Clinton has many economic plans and immigration plans to help solve all both of those problems in our country. All right. And Reese, I know you're a Trump supporter. What do you like about Trump? Well, Trump is um, less the same old, same old that we've been having for the past couple of presidential debates that have really done nothing for the economy. Um, I don't really like Hillary's because mainly she's not doing anything new. She's just copying everything that's already happened. She's going to keep Obamacare in, which is bad because it's already a flawed system. All right. And what do you like about Trump, dislike about Trump? I don't like Trump's immigration policies or the fact that he has no plans on anything. All right. There it is. A common reasoning for the support of Donald Trump that we've heard is that he'd bring a more business approach to running the United States. So what are your thoughts on running the country as a businessman rather than a politician? I personally think that running the United States from a businessman perspective is probably better than a politician. One, because they have a lot of experience with money and he's been in the business world. He would help us bring us out of the debt that the Democrats have created. I definitely think that well, we're starting to get final counts in from the Northeast region. The PPNC is calling it, and the projected winner in New York is Donald Trump, winning 42% of the votes, and Hillary, 25% of the votes. And the projected winner in Massachusetts is also Donald Trump, winning 57% of the votes, and Hillary, only 8%. By Donald Trump winning Massachusetts and New York, he has gained 40 electoral votes, 29 from New York and 11 from Massachusetts. We're going to go to Bo Gross in New York, who is with legislators Andrew Reynolds and Zach States. Hello, I'm Bo Gross here with two New York State Representatives, Andrew Reynolds and Zach States. I'm going to ask them who they're voting for and their concerns about this upcoming election and why they are not voting for the other candidate. Andrew, we're going to start with you. Okay, so I'm, I'm concerned about um, dealing with ISIS and you know, some, some, some of the economic policies. Um, I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. Um, I don't like either candidate, particularly, but I, do, I just agree more with Donald Trump than I do Hillary Clinton. I will side with Andrew, other than the fact that I think I would vote for Hillary, just because I think Trump is too quick to respond in ways, and he says things that I think he kind of regrets sometimes. Um, I see this country, some issues with this election would be, I don't like the professionalism, the presidential part of the election. Uh, one of the biggest things, like the debates, especially, would be like, neither candidate as a handshake at the beginning, and that's just kind of a sign of respect, I think. Uh, that's kind of been one of the biggest pet peeves for me. So. Thank you. Also, earlier this week, Bo Gross was able to catch up with some of the early voters in the state of Massachusetts. Hello, I'm Bo Gross here with some concerned Massachusetts voters. Vinnie Abrams, I've come to know that you're supporting Donald Trump. Can you tell me a little bit about that? 
Well, I support Donald Trump because I believe that we need to bring back our outsourced jobs to our country so we can build up industry and our economy. And I enjoy his supply side sort of economic vision. And you do not support either candidate? No. Thank you. You heard it here first. We are now receiving more confirmation from the Southeast region. North Carolina will go to Donald Trump with 65% of the votes and Hillary only 15%. The major swing state Florida will also go to Donald Trump with him winning 80% of the votes and Hillary Clinton winning 16%. Wow, that's surprising. I don't think there will have to be a recount of these votes this year. Usually Florida is a lot closer, but obviously the Floridians are pretty united in their support of Donald Trump. Logan had a chance to interview some early voters from the state of Florida. I am Logan Magram here with three concerned voters from the state of Florida. Mr. McKinney, I understand that you were voting for Donald Trump. Can you please tell me why? Uh, he's a good man. I like, uh, I like a lot of his notions. Notions. Joseph, what about you? Is there one certain policy that stands out from Mr. Trump that you agree with? Um, he's bringing the jobs back to the United States. And what about you, Mr. Eamon? Well, I like a lot of his policies, including his pro-life policies. Thank you. Logan Magram is currently in North Carolina with State Legislator Hollis Erickson. Let's go out to that. I'm Logan Magram here with State Legislature Hollis Erickson of North Carolina. I understand that you are not for either of the candidates in this upcoming election. Can you please tell me some reasons why? Well, Hillary seems very untrustworthy. She's deleted, what, 33,000 emails? And I don't think we'd want someone like that in charge of our country because who knows what she'd do with the rest of the information she'd be given. But Donald Trump, he speaks very rudely about women, and he doesn't seem to have many plans beyond build a wall. So neither one seems like a very good option. So if you had to choose one, do you think you could make that decision, or do you think there's just no way you could ever have either one of those as president? Mm, I don't know. If I had to choose, I guess I might choose Hillary Clinton, but I'm not sure I'd want to be forced to make that decision. Understandable. Thank you. Votes are now coming in from the Southwest region. In the state of Texas, Trump wins with 59% of the votes and Hillary with 18%. The state of Louisiana is also going to Donald Trump with 25% of the votes and Hillary only 8%. We had a chance to catch up with the governor of Texas, Mark Schein. Now out to that interview. Hello, I'm here with Texas Governor Mark Schein. <laughs> Texas has 38 electoral votes, and Trump is currently ahead, 44 to 39 percent. You know, we're going to talk about some issues here, first starting with immigration and border security. Well, that's a huge issue in Texas because we've had a large number of illegal immigrants come into our border states, border counties. And with that in mind, there's been some lawlessness, some violence. And so many people in the southern part of Texas are anti-Hillary Clinton because they believe that she will continue those immigration policies. Okay, and then now we're going to switch gears, go to abortion and the nomination of Supreme Court judges. Well, Texas is a very conservative, somewhat religious state, and the belief is that abortion is wrong for the majority of the people in our state. And so they would like to see Supreme Court judges nominated who will not back abortion rights. So again, many Texans favor Trump over Clinton in that issue. Okay, now now tell me a little bit of views on Second Amendment gun rights. Well, Texas is a state, and in fact, until just recently, it was legal to carry a firearm open with you in Texas anywhere that you wanted to go, and that has changed, obviously, recently. But Texas is a big state as far as gun rights. We believe that you should have the right to defend yourself. We believe in the right to conceal carry. We believe in the right to protect yourself. And so we are very definitely, as a state, uh, in favor of the Second Amendment and enforcement of that in such a manner that allows us to continue those gun rights. And again, that favors Mr. Trump over Mrs. Clinton. Also, we've heard Mr. Trump talked a lot about the policy NAFTA, which was drafted by Bill Clinton. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, NAFTA, of course, uh, the North American Free Trade Agreement between the United States, Canada, and Mexico has allowed many jobs in our country to go into the state of Mexico and away from the United States. And with that in mind, many Texans are opposed to NAFTA. Now, Mr. Trump has been opposed to NAFTA for a long time. Mrs. Clinton has recently come out that she is also opposed to NAFTA. So perhaps that is a, a somewhat dead issue in our state right now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm here with Megan Plikert, a voter from the state of Texas. Megan, what's your biggest concern about this election? Some of my biggest concerns are uh, over equal rights and like the wage gap uh, with women and the working class. Yeah, and why do you think Donald Trump would be the best candidate? Well, he's a businessman. Uh, he works a lot with the business, so I think he can help to grow our economy in a beneficial way. Yeah, and um, what are your like conflicts with Hillary? 
Um, I'm just concerned, like, over how truthful she'll be and, like, while a president and, like, what, sh what her plans are when she's president. Yeah. Thank you. Also, Bo Gross was able to catch up with early voter Alexis Ball in the state of Louisiana. Hello, I'm Bo Gross. You're with Concerned Louisiana voter Alexis Ball. Alexis, tell me, who are you going to vote for? Donald Trump. And why would you vote for him over the other candidates? Um, I like his views on, like, the economy and police and just his general ideas better, I guess. I understand what you're saying. And what are your concerns with Donald Trump if he gets elected, if he has any cons to it? I think he's obviously a little crazy. Um, I, it, would, it would scare me. He'd probably get impeached, which, I mean, then we'd have Mike Pence and I like him better. So that's kind of what I want. Thank you. Although many people may agree with Alexis's point of view and worry his temperament may impair his judgment as president, it seems as if voters prefer the crazy of Donald Trump rather than the dishonesty of Hillary Clinton. We're just now getting confirmation from the West in the state of California. Donald Trump wins with 85% of votes and Hillary Clinton with 9%. Logan Magrum had a chance to interview state legislator Derek Inskeep. Now out to that. I'm Logan Magrum here with state legislator Derek Inskeep. Can you talk to me about what are some of the key components the voters are looking for? Well, I know first and foremost is gun control. And I, for one, am for Donald Trump's plan of letting people keep their guns and their right to bear arms. And then move over to education. Do you agree with the Common Core or do you think Common Core is not such a good idea? Well, I know that Hillary Clinton wants to keep Common Core, but Donald Trump wants to leave it up to the people to decide. Sounds good. Thank you. The Democratic Party has always wanted to regulate gun control, while the Republican Party sees that it's taking away their Second Amendment rights. It's now official. Donald Trump has won the 2016 presidential election. Donald Trump has earned the 270 electoral votes to become the President of the United States, winning by a margin of 45%. Donald Trump has put a large amount of money into his political campaign. It looks as if it's paid off. He's going to make America great again. We're going to end our show by going out to the Republican Party headquarters for the celebration.